All right, guys, so I know one thing that a lot of you are looking forward to is the ammo system with reload, but we are not going to be covering that today. Sorry, as you can tell from the title, we have to do one more thing before we do that because I don't want to have to do this during that video or set of videos, and that is loading and storing MBT data. Okay, so what that means is I right click here and it has these stats, but I could give myself a gun that has some different stats and it would work with those different stats rather than having them hard set by the user on the sidebar with fake players. Okay, so if, if I do data get entity as selected item dot tag dot stats, you can see that the stats on the sidebar correlate to the ones in this stats data. So we're going to go ahead and do that. It does not take very long. So the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to have some changes here. So we're going to let's just add the stats. Let's add the stats first. So here's the stats. We're going to add them. Let's do cooldown of 20 auto delay of two, or let's change this to three auto fire of four and uh, draw time of zero and semi auto of zero. And that should be all the stats that we have so far. Okay, so those are all the stats we have so far. And we'll work on organizing later, perhaps. Uh, so then what we want to do is we need to grab the stats, okay? So we're going to do data modify storage gun stats set from entity as selected item dot tag dot stats. Okay, so this copies your stats. And then now wherever we have stuff like right here, instead of grabbing from the entity, we're going to grab from the storage of gun stats dot ID. And this will be more efficient because uh, getting doing a data get for an entity is more expensive than a data get from a storage. Uh, so that is going to work like that. So now we have to think, when do we need to obtain these stats? Like, when are they important? And some of the places where they're important is when shooting and when swapping. So that's where we're going to implement this. So inside swap, we're going to do function gun gun slash get stats. Okay. And this is going to be how you grab the stats. Now we don't want to do it multiple times because it's kind of a waste. So we're going to do execute if score dot loaded stats matches zero. So if we have not already loaded them, the other place where you want to grab the stats is right as you're going to shoot because that's where you actually use them. So we're going to go ahead and load there. Uh, if we look inside shoots, you can see over here, we don't actually need stats. It's just stuff like, uh, ooh, Semi-auto is one that we actually do need to get uh, frequently. So how about we put one right here, okay? And let's go ahead and move it out. Uh, and then inside the burst, we also need it inside the burst. So those are the places where we need it. Uh, if we go back to main player, you can see uh, there's no more reference to semi-auto or anything that is stored on the gun intrinsically. So we're all good. These like right click, uh, right click is uh, not an intrinsic stat. These stats are stats that are carried from the player. So we're all good now. So when you shoot and when you go to burst, when you try to shoot and when you try to burst, you need to have the stats. So we'll put them all there. Now let's actually do the get stats function. So we go into here, we make a new function called get stats. Okay. And then inside this function, we're going to do scoreboard players set dot loaded stats one, which means you loaded them. Then do execute store result score cooldown stats run data get storage gun stats dot cooldown. Okay. And then we're just going to copy this line a couple times. Okay, so we have auto fire. Then we have auto delay. We also have semi dash auto. And I kind of regret having the dash in it, but we're going to keep it anyways. Uh, and then we have draw dash time. Okay. And once we do that, let's go ahead and do draw time semi-auto 
auto delay and we're good so now we have all the stats and they get loaded from here oh one last thing so that loaded score at the end of every tick or the end of every test needs to be set back to zero at the bottom so now we'll just set it to zero so that the next player or the next tick that this runs it will uh, know that so now when i right click it it updates and it will also update when i switch okay cool so uh, that's everything we need for loading stats that didn't take very long since we have a little bit extra time in terms of what I wanted to get done, what we can do is if we look at our item modifier, we have this like set MBT, right? So we're going to copy this set MBT and call it set stats. Okay. And I'm going to delete this text up here. We may not even need the set MBT. So this copies from gun stats onto storage onto the items stats okay so that's very nice what we can now do is inside the stats we can add something that maybe will change and uh, you'll obviously know what i mean with that later let's add a stat called ammo but i'm probably going to, i'm honestly probably going to change this later so don't get used to it i'm probably going to add like a sub uh sub stats thing that has like all the ammo related things i'll probably organize but anyway so now we have something called ammo right and now when you shoot, when you actually go to shoot, I can do something like, uh, let's see, inside get stats, we can also grab the ammo. Okay. And that'll grab the ammo. And then when you shoot, we can do scoreboard players remove dot ammo stats one. All right, so after we remove one, we do need to load this data back onto the data array and then load it back to the player. So you would think that we're going to do that right here, but we're actually not. We're just going to set a flag here. And let's call this uh, dot save stats. So dot save means that uh, you need to save. So this will set a flag. And then at the very end, we will save, okay? So at the bottom here, we will go execute if score stats matches one run function gun colon gun slash set stats, okay? And inside here, we will have a function called set stats, which will then do this, set that to zero. And then we will go uh, the other way so we'll do data get storage uh no execute store result storage gun stats dot ammo int one run scoreboard players get dot ammo stats okay so that'll just get it and we only need it for ones that we know can change uh and then we are going to do item modify entity at s weapon dot main hand with gun set stats okay so i do reload and if i right click you can see the number counting down but only when i shoot so we're also going to want to go into the burst function which operates similar to the shoot function and obviously apply the same thing so if i go into shoot i copy this logic into burst throw it down here then Again, we're going to see this decrease a lot. So you can see the ammo go down. Obviously, this is more part of the ammo system, but there's other stats besides ammo. So that's why I included it in this video. So there's other stats that may change uh, as you go, as the player clicks. So this is just kind of a good way to save and load data that you don't necessarily want to be tied specifically to the player. You want tied to the gun. You could argue that draw time, you might want to tie to the gun or to the player but i found that draw time acting as cooldown makes more sense to tie to the player for efficiency reasons uh and ammo makes more sense to tie to the gun so if i drop the ammo it's not like it if i drop the gun it will save the ammo but it won't save like where you were on the cooldown that doesn't that's not important information because every time you pull the gun out the cooldown will reset so there's no reason to save that as mbt anyways thanks for watching guys and i'll see you next time